you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak about how our government for the people is making changes to help make the lives of all Ontarians easier by taking important first steps to reduce hydro rates. Over the past 15 years of Liberal government, we saw families feel the brunt of skyrocketing energy prices and manufacturing jobs leaving Ontario. It's clear that the only people that benefited from the Green Energy Act were Liberal insiders and donors who got rich at the expense of Ontarians, Shameful. making the choice Shameful. between yeah, heating Shameful. and eating. Mr. Speaker, this issue is one I have a personal interest in and have followed quite closely for a number of years. And that's because the wasteful and misguided Green Energy Act is one of the reasons I got into politics. When the act was first introduced by the McGuinty government, I was co-hosting a program on CHCH television in Hamilton called Square Off, where the issues of the day were analyzed and debated. To be frank, I was enjoying a successful career in broadcast journalism. I enjoyed my colleagues, I enjoyed the content that we covered, and I enjoyed spending more time with family and friends than a life in politics might allow. But there was something disingenuous about the arguments being put forward by the proponent of the Liberal government's Green Energy Act that really got to me. As a mother, as a consumer, as someone who had to manage a household budget, it just didn't add up. It also didn't sit well with my upbringing. When I grew up in Northern Ontario, as I've talked about in this legislature before, Ontario was growing. We were the economic engine of Canada, and I knew one of the key reasons was our abundant supply of affordable hydroelectricity. It was a huge strategic asset. Our economy depended on it, which is why my sense then, and our experience now, is that the ideas behind the Green Energy Act were fraught with problems. The more I thought about it, the more I was concerned. Eventually, that concern, along with ballooning deficits and other scandals, would prompt me to run for political office to effect change. Mr. Speaker, today I want to share three reasons why the Green Energy Act has failed Ontarians. The culmination of which is that the Green Energy Act made it harder for businesses in Ontario to stay open. It simply became too expensive for manufacturers to operate here. An unfortunate extension of this we have seen recently. GM is planning to close up shop in Oshawa by next December. Since day one, our government has been committed to getting rid of the waste left behind by the Liberals. And that is why we cancelled 758 expensive and wasteful projects as part of our larger plan to cut hydro rates by 12 percent saving electricity consumers $790 million. It's not our responsibility to force communities into doing things they don't want to do. We are allowing our municipalities to decide what works best for them. Bill 34 is intended to give the government the authority to stop the approval of wasteful projects and give power to the municipalities to do the same while maintaining measures that promote energy efficiency, and energy conservation. This will allow electricity prices to stay at a level that the people of Ontario can actually afford. I would like to take some time now to share with the House how the Green Energy Act negatively impacted our province and hence why it needs to be repealed. An executive summary released by the government when the Green Energy Act was first tabled goes into detail about the Liberals had hoped to achieve. According to this summary, the purpose of the Green Energy Act was to enable all Ontarians to participate and benefit from green energy as conservers and generators at the lowest co cost to consumers. The summary also states that a greater emphasis on conservation and efficiency would be at least 11 to 32 percent less expensive. We know this never happened because energy prices nearly tripled under the Liberals. It's beyond belief how prices could increase so much at a time when electricity supply was increasing and demand was decreasing. These sharp increases put Ontario near the top of the list when it came to electricity costs across North America, which in turn would hit the economy with decreased investments due to the extra costs placed on larger energy consumers. In 2013, 
the Fraser Institute conducted a study that looked into the effects the Green Energy Act had in our province. They concluded that the act had disastrous impacts on Ontario's energy rates and would seriously threaten economic competitiveness with investments estimated to drop by nearly 13% in the mining sector and almost 30% in manufacturing. Our government cannot stand by while our job creators face obstacles that are preventing them from paying for good, well-paying jobs that can provide the boost our economy desperately needs. Let's look at the study's three main conclusions as to how the Green Energy Act failed the people of Ontario. The first conclusion is that it is unlikely the Green Energy Act will yield any environmental improvements other than those that would have happened anyway under policy and technology trends established since the 1970s. How is it that a plan that was supposed to be modern and fit for the 21st century is giving us the same results as those from 40 years ago? It really makes you think about what the Liberals' true motive was when it came to passing laws that involved rewarding contracts to people. The McGuinty Wynn government's own cost benefits analysis of the act, albeit confidential at the time, predicted that closing coal plants would yield nearly unnoticeable effects of air quality, which had been improving on a consistent basis since the 1980s. Most types of air contamination had already fallen below the strictest provincial limits by the year 2000. What's even more interesting is the impact of wind power on emissions. Due to the ever-changing nature of wind power, adding this to the electricity grid requires backup power from natural gas plants. If the Liberals had their way, we would have had to lose a nuclear plant at the expense of this renewable and gas-fired generation combo. The move could have actually led to a net increase in air emission, the exact opposite of what the Green Energy Act was supposed to achieve. Our government has shown that not only are we committed to getting rid of wasteful programs, we are committed to supporting nuclear power and have done so by protecting the jobs of 7,500 people working at the Pickering nuclear, uh, nuclear plant. The second point is that the plans implanted under the Green Energy Act are not cost effective. Rather, it costs 10 times more than an alternative found in a confidential McGuinty government report in 2005 and leads to the same environmental goals as simply closing coal-fired power plants. By using this report to support the Green Energy Act, the Liberals hid the truth from the public since it never considered or recommended replacing coal with wind or solar power. According to the Fraser Institute, the confidential report did contain a retrofit option for coal plants that would have led to the same greenhouse gas reductions as closing the plants at the tenth of the cost of the Green Energy Act and one seventieth if the plan was seen to completion. That means huge savings for taxpayers ranging in the billions of dollars. However, both the Liberals and NDP decided to vote in favor of a plan that benefited the loyalty of Liberal donors over the best use of taxpayer dollars. The third point that the Fraser Institute made clear was that the Green Energy Act would not create jobs or grow the Ontario economy. The truth is that the overall effect of the Act was an increase in production costs, reduced competitiveness, and making households worse off due to the skyrocketing costs it uh, astoundingly that a government would claim that a program as costly as the Green Energy Act would create 50,000 jobs without any formal analysis to base that number on. The Liberals were forced to admit that the jobs created were mainly temporary and their magic number of 50,000 never accounted for job losses from increased costs. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to see that we are standing here repealing in hopes of repealing this. It's one of the reasons I decided, as I mentioned earlier, to run for MPP, and I'm honoured to be able to stand here in support of Bill 34 to help make it happen for all Ontarians. I encourage all members of this House to stand up with the people of Ontario who have waited far too long for lower hydro rates and support the repealing of the Green Energy Act. And I move that pursuant to Standing Order 48, that the question be now put.